Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And let me introduce to you Jake Lee. He is the co founder of an online education platform utilizing the Flare network. And he assembled a choice variety of questions for me, ranging from why I chose to cover the company Ripple and the digital asset XRP to what my advice is in growing a community for social media. Our conversation was recorded at just over 50 minutes, and I'm going to share with you 14 minutes of that. Should it be interesting for you, I put the link to Jake's channel in the description. Enjoy. Welcome back to the Magnetic Growth Podcast. Today, I'm joined by a good friend, I would say now, Crypto Eri who is one of my favorite content creators in the space, um, notably in the XRP and Flare community. Eri started recording videos in her home a few years ago now with her phone mic, I believe, and has since amassed a following of over 340,000, 240,000 on Twitter and over 100,000 on YouTube. Eri's growth has been utterly admirable. And in this episode of the Magnetic Growth Podcast, we're going to learn more about Eri's journey and also the key learnings that she may have for aspiring Web3 content creators, KOLs, and so on. Eri, how are you doing today? Very good, Jake. Thank you for inviting me and it's nice to see you. It's always nice to see you. Was that a, a good enough introduction? Is there anything that I missed there? No, I think that your questions will probably unfold a lot of maybe the uh, the, the the finer points within those details. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, okay, well, firstly, I always have to ask this question. How are you feeling about the current market? Yeah, well, the regulatory action from the United States has been horrendous, right? So the crypto community, especially that cheered... Um, the attack that took place on Ripple and XRP uh, proved to be on the wrong side of history. And, and I think that now a lot of the other um, digital assets in this space are realizing that a divided community really is our weakness. And so coming together and, and really getting through these hurdles is going to be very important. And also within the current marketplace, Maximalism, for the most part, is is reducing, but I still see it as toxic behavior, and it still exists. And I'd like to see that eventually uh, be eradicated. Um, if when we talk about meme coins, because because this this particular market cycle has really been active with meme coins, I might have a contrarian point of view. I think that that we should be really happy that it, it has resulted in the onboarding of lots of new people in the space. And there's lots of people who are having fun. And it's the same as NFTs. I mean, we saw people who never imagined that they would be in this space and they're using wallets, they're experiencing community, they're using new web tools and they're getting educated on the benefits of blockchain and smart contracts. So. Yeah, I, I think that in terms of the current market, it's got a lot of um, it's fast changing. There's a lot of good thing. There's a lot of there's a lot of things that are are still quite challenging, and AI is going to completely again make a whole new change on our space. But I think it's more exciting than ever, and I'm really happy to be here. I think, yeah, well put. I agree with your contrarian view about meme coins. Don't get me wrong. In some cases, they can be toxic and harmful to people, but they are forever showing to be such a key aspect of growth for the whole of our ecosystem. Um, like you said, they onboard new users. They bring people into learning how to use a wallet for the first time and conducting transactions in cryptocurrency and understanding what moves on our market you know so it's essentially a type of education which is bringing and onboarding users into our space which again is growth um so i agree with you massively on that point i think it's a, a super important one um so yeah I, I think uh yeah really well put and i think i want to try and you mentioned xrp in in your introduction 
Um, obviously, that's a arena that you've spent a lot of time in and you're very, very familiar in the XRP community. I suppose the, the question I have is with the likes of meme coins taking off, you mentioned AI as well as a emerging massive narrative. You're still, you know, in that XRP community. Why was it XRP to start with? And why is it still XRP for you now? Yeah, well, I think that if you look at when I started to create content, um, you'd have to go back to 2013 when Bitcoin was introduced to me by a fellow developer here in Tokyo. He purchased a URL from me. I, I've been in I've been in the in the internet space since the late 90s, and I did squat on a few URLs, and I had fun finding homes for those URLs early on. And I happened to find a home for one of them that was very good uh, with this developer who was originally from the UK living in Tokyo, and he introduced me to Bitcoin. So that was 2013. And by 2014, January, I made my first purchase and followed the space and started to follow other YouTubers quite heavily in 2017. So you're and, a decade in now. <laughs> yeah, it's a the long time. <laughs> yeah. So I was originally a Bitcoin channel. Um, I was I was completely okay, okay. yeah, I was completely in Bitcoin. But when I found that I had been schooled by somebody in my comment section that I was making incorrect statements about the XRP ledger and the digital asset XRP, which is the native token, um, I said, well, I better research this and figure out who's right here. And I, of course, I learned I was a victim of a lot of the maxi talk and narrative that was not correct. And so I thought to myself, if I'm going to continue uh, doing videos, and this is 2018, that I had better um, rely on the facts. So as I was relying on the facts, Ripple was a very fun company to follow in those early days really fun company when you when you were a bitcoin channel the only thing you really have to talk about is price now that's different ordinals and runes and and some of the um, uh, payment development that's taking place it, it's a little different you've got more to talk about with bitcoin than price but in those days really the only thing you could talk about was price and so i got a little bored with that and when I found that co covering the company Ripple was fun because they were making a lot of moves, doing a lot of education, creating a lot of partnerships, making ways into the um, the financial end of blockchain. Yeah, that was super exciting. So I wanted to participate and not miss what they were doing. And I think that, yeah, I think anybody who's been in the XRP community has had some of that same um, excitement as we've seen the space mature. Yeah, I mean, I XRP was actually one of the first assets that I bought uh, in 2017, I think it was. And again, similar was they seem to be building something um, with a vision to have this real world use case. And as you mentioned, I didn't really, to be honest, at that time, I didn't really understand blockchain and how the space was going to develop, but I was excited, similar to you in terms of, well, this is something unique. Um, but obviously a lot has happened since 2017. This is seven years ago now. Um, and you're still in the XRP community producing content. Is there, is there a reason for that? Um, as to why you're, you know, you're, you're still there. Like you mentioned, there's so much technological innovation going on. You've become a voice in in, in the blockchain flair as well, um, who are yeah doing some pretty cool stuff. Uh, but still in 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 XRP, is there, is there a reason why you you know that's that's still the story seven years later? Yeah, well, I I think that in terms of the tokens that I've covered and the people I've had on my channel from from Sunny Lou in um, V Chain and Anish from. Uh, the Watts Pay, and I mean, just so many utility tokens, even um, um, the uh, CEO of SHX, which is 
working not only uh, on the XRP ledger, but also on the Stellar blockchain. And I think in terms of utilitarian tokens in payments, that really has my interest. And um, that company, again, I go back to Ripple, is has in the past, before they shifted to custody and tokenization, they have been a leader in the payments industry. You know, I live in Tokyo. And so I experienced that pain point of cross-border remittances firsthand and and the the ability to actually transfer uh, funds and value using the digital asset XRP within literally two two to three to five seconds max for just fractions of a penny is quite important and so mm -hmm. with that pain point I think I think it's still relevant especially for all the migrant workers that are around the world that sacrificed, left their countries, are working in places that they have to send money home to every month. This is still a really relevant pain point. And there are certain parts of the world where the transmitters are still charging them in insane amounts of money, like 7%, even as high as 20 some percent in parts of Africa. So this is just, you know, it's it's all about also providing an equitable solution and XRP is still providing that equitable solution. And that is important uh, outside of, of just um, having also some love for the cypherpunk uh, ethos. When you, when you really look at what was done in uh, the manifesto, when they talk about how, how the code is going to really dictate our privacy and in this electronic age, we need to defend our privacy still. The code is free. It can't be destroyed. Well, the XRP ledger is also open source, can be used by anybody. It is non-discriminatory. Uh, for those people who need to utilize that blockchain. So I, I know that people maybe forget that it was one of the first blockchains out there with, it was the first with a decentralized exchange built on it. Um, it. It really does serve its purpose. And so it hasn't lost my interest. Although if you look back through my videos, I have had, um, I have had so many, I, I have hosted more than 30 or 40 different guests on my channel channel annually for the last seven years. That's a lot of people who've been on my channel. And they're not all, in fact, almost all of my guests are not necessarily part of the XRP ecosystem. And most of them are outside the ecosystem. So yeah, I, I think that's a, a long and a long way to go about answering your question. But that's why I'm still covering this space. Yeah, I think it's interesting from a growth perspective, XRP uh, have managed to form such an amazing community. It's one of the strongest communities in the whole of the space. Um, and yeah, the, the loyalty and support because XRP have been building a long time and they've been around, the, they've been around for a long time and to still have such a prevalent community is is testament to those that are involved in it um like yourself for for you know creating great quality content keeping everyone in the loop and always trying to look forward um to to what's coming next and what's around the corner so yeah from a community-led growth standpoint which is the final kind of core pillar that we look at when it comes to growth xrp is a tremendous example of how to create uh user-generated community-led growth and yeah, I mean, we kind of skipped it. You kind of got into it a little bit in terms of why you started creating content in the first place. Um, I'm assuming it's that you fell in love with 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 the technology once you were introduced to it. You started creating Bitcoin content that navigated into XRP. And then also, as you discussed, other types of content as well. But would you say that XRP is, is, is the bedrock of your audience? And also, am I right in saying that's why you started creating content with, you know, in the Bitcoin times, or have I missed anything in that journey? 